Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use the newly integrated Trosten AI lineup, including the solo, stationary, and the mobile platforms with the LayerBot pipeline. What this means is now you can get full access to machine learning and data collection stack built specifically for physical AI. You can collect episodes, visualize them, even train models like ACT, Pi0, Groot, evaluate them and share everything to Hugging Face Hub using one unified pipeline. Let's get started. We'll start by installing LayerBot, which is a core pipeline that connects the Trosten AI arms to everything else, from data collection to model training and evaluation. To keep things clean and isolated, we'll use Miniconda to manage the environment. First, if you haven't already downloaded and installed Miniconda for your system, you can find the installer linked in the official Miniconda doc. Once that's done, go ahead and create a new environment for LayerBot. We recommend using Python 3.10. Next, clone the LayerBot repository. Make sure you are using Trosten AI branch. Then move into the folder and install it along with the support for Trosten AI arms and camera integration. Now, depending on your system, you might hit some build errors especially related to video dependencies. If that happens, just install the following. If you are on a Linux system, you'll also need FFmpeg to enable dataset recording. We recommend using Conda version 7.0. And just to confirm that everything works properly, you can run which FFmpeg. This will show you the binary path and make sure it's properly linked. Once that's done, you are all set up and ready to configure the arms. So let's move on. All right. Now that LayerBot is installed, let's configure the system to match your specific robot setup. Trosten AI arms come in three types, stationary, mobile, and solo. All three follow nearly the same configuration process and you will find detailed examples in the code base. For this video, we'll be using the solo arm for our reference. The robot configuration lives in the LayerBot common robot devices robot slash configs.py file. This is where you specify everything the system needs to know about your setup, like IP addresses, models, camera settings, and safety limit. Let's break it down. Each arm, whether its leader or follower is configured with an IP address and the model name. By default, most arms ship with an IP address of 192.168.1.2 for the leader and 192.168.1.3 for the follower. But you can customize this based on your network. Make sure your computer is on the same subnet and if you need to change the IP address, you can use configure cleanup, set IP method or set manual IP script provided in the repository. One important configuration is the max relative target. This limits how far the arm can move in a single command, which helps avoid sudden and dangerous jumps. For example, a value of five degrees means the motor won't rotate more than that in one step. You can increase or even disable this once you're more comfortable with the teleoperation or policy control. There's also force feedback gain which lets you feel external contact forces through the leader arm during teleoperation. Setting this to zero disables it. A good starting value is 0.1 for responsive but stable feel. Next, let's set up the cameras. LayerBot supports both Intel RealSense and OpenCV-based USB cameras, and you can choose whichever works for you the best. By default, the system uses RealSense, but you can switch between them using robot.camera interface flag in your commands. If you're using RealSense cameras, open the RealSense viewer tool, plug the cameras and copy the serial number from the info panel. Paste the serial numbers into the configuration under Intel RealSense camera config. Repeat this for each camera, for example, your main scene camera or your wrist camera. If the viewer doesn't detect your cameras, try selecting add source and look for D405. Also make sure you are using a USB port with enough bandwidth. If you see freezing or dropping frames, try switching ports or using a powered USB hub. If you want a lighter setup, you can switch to OpenCV interface. Camera indices are how OpenCV identifies which device is which. Usually it starts at index zero, but it can change depending upon the order of connection. To find your camera indices, you can run this utility script. This will save a few frames from each detected camera. Check the images inside the output folder to identify which index maps to which physical camera. Then just update the config using OpenCV camera config. Set the index and you're good to go. 
Once your ARMs and cameras are configured in the config.py script, you are ready to move on to teleoperation and data collection. Teleoperation is where you can manually control the follower robots in real time using your leader arms. Leaderbot supports all three Trusten AI platforms, solo, stationary, and mobile. The basic commands stay the same, so you need to just specify your robot type. For example, here's how you launch safe teleoperation with the solo setup. The max relative target equals five flag limits how far the motors can move in each command. This is a safety measure, and we highly recommend keeping it on for your first few runs, especially if you're working close to the robot. Now, once you are more comfortable and confident in controlling the arms, you can loosen or even remove this restriction by setting the values to null, like this. If you have set up both RealSense and OpenCV cameras, you can also tell LayerBot which one to use at runtime. Just pass the robot camera interface flag. For example, to use OpenCV with teleoperation, use OpenCV as the flag for camera interface. This is useful when you're testing with webcam or want to avoid the USB bandwidth issues that can sometimes come with the RealSense cameras. You also get a few optional flags to customize how teleoperation runs. Control.fps sets how many commands are sent per second. Higher values give smoother motion. Control.teleop time lets you define how long the teleop session lasts. Control.display cameras add the display cameras flag if you want to see a live feed from the cameras during teleoperation. All of these make it easy to dial in your workflow, whether you're testing motion, collecting data, or just getting comfortable with the controls. Now that you have gotten the hang of teleoperation, let's move on to recording episodes. This is where you start recording data sets that you later use for training and evaluation. Recording is really straightforward and uses the exact same control script. The only difference is the control type. To begin recording dataset with your Trosten arm, run this. This launches a dataset collection session. But if you want to push your dataset to the Hugging Face Hub, there are a few extra steps you'll need to take first. If this is your first time using Hugging Face Hub, you'll need to log in using Right Access Token. You can generate that token from your Hugging Face account settings. Then run Hugging Face CLI login. Once you're logged in, store your username in a variable. This will make the next steps easier to run. To record two episodes and upload them, you can run the following. This will warm up the robot, run two episodes for 30 seconds each, reset in between, and push everything directly to your Hugging Face repository. A quick note, all joint values are now recorded in radians and the gripper values are stored in millimeters. There is no additional scaling applied to either of them. If you're recording and you start noticing dropped frames or unstable camera performance, you might be hitting USB or processing limit, especially with the RealSense cameras. To fix this, you can try increasing the number of image writer threads and disabling the live camera feed. Alternatively, you can switch to OpenCV camera interface, which tends to use less bandwidth. Just add this to your command. Make sure your camera interface is properly configured in your config file before switching. There are plenty of flags that you can customize while recording. A few of the most important ones include control FPS that decides how fast to record the data. Control single task is a brief description of what the robot is doing. The repository ID is where you want the data set to be uploaded. We also specify tags that are used for the metadata for the Hugging Face Hub. Warm-up time, episode time, and reset time control the timings of each phase. The number of episodes decides how many episodes are to be collected. Push to Hub decides whether to upload your data to the Hub or no. You'll find even more advanced options in the documentation like recording audio feedback, video encoding, running stats, or uploading privately. Once you have recorded episodes and uploaded them to the Hub, the next part is visualization. And that's what we are going to cover next. Whether you upload the dataset to the hub or keep it local, LayerBot gives you tools to inspect and review what's collected, including camera feeds, robot states, and task metadata, all in a clean, scrollable HTML interface. If you have used push to hub is equals true during your recording, your dataset is already live on Hugging Face Hub. To visualize this, you'll need your repository ID, which follows the format Hugging Face username slash dataset ID. You can retrieve it like this. Echo HF username, trust an AI solo test. Once you have that ID, just paste it into Hugging Face dataset viewer, and you'll be able to explore your episodes right from the browser. No need to download or open anything manually. If you didn't upload your dataset or just want to preview it offline, 
you can still launch the same viewer locally. This will generate a local HTML file that you can open in your browser. You will see synchronized camera feeds, timeline navigations, and access to the underlying data for each frame. So whether you're working online or offline, reviewing your data set is just one command away. Now that you have recorded and visualized your episodes, the next step is to replay them on real robot. Here's how you do it. You can replay any episode using the same control script as before but with the mode set to replay. Here's an example of how to replay the first episode. This will load episode zero from the specified repository, play it back at 30 FPS, and send those join commands directly to your robot. As of the latest version, all joint values are now stored in radians, and the gripper values are in millimeters with no scaling applied. If you're using older data sets, especially anything from Trosson V1.0 or earlier, joint values may be in degrees, and gripper positions might be scaled by 10,000. Be sure to check the dataset format before replaying any episode. There are a few more arguments that you can use to customize your replay behavior. The control episode decides which episode to replay by index. Root is where your dataset is stored locally. FPS is used to set a custom playback speed. Local files only lets you use local files instead of downloading from Hugging Face Hub. Play sounds enables vocal cues during the replay. These are especially helpful when testing on different systems or tuning playback for precision tasks. Once you have collected and reviewed your dataset, the next step is to train a policy that can learn from it and control your robot automatically. Let's break that down into two parts, training and evaluation. To start the training, we'll use the train.py script. It handles loading the dataset, configuring the model, running training, and saving checkpoints along the way. Here's what the basic command looks like. Let's quickly go over what each part does. The dataset repository ID points to the dataset you recorded and pushed to the Hugging Face Hub. Policy type selects what model architecture you are using, in this case, action chunking transformers. But you can also change it to Pi0 or others. Output directory and job name define where the results and the checkpoints will be stored. Device specifies which device to train on. If you are using Apple Silicon, use MPS, otherwise use CPU if no GPU is available. Enabling one B turns on weights and biases, logging so you can monitor training metrics in real time. If you haven't logged into weights and biases yet, just run 1B login. Now keep in mind, training will take a while. Checkpoints will be saved inside your output directory so you can resume or evaluate them later. You can configure just about every part of the training process. Batch size, logging frequency, evaluation intervals, whether to use AMP, number of data loader workers, optimizers, schedulers, and even offline and online training modes. You can find a full list of training flags in the docs if you want to go deeper. Once your model is trained, it's time to test it on the real robot. This part looks a lot like data set recording step. The main difference is that you provide train model checkpoints using the control.policy.path flag. Here's how you would run 10 evaluation episodes. Let's walk you through what's new here. Control.policy.path points to the model you train. You can also replace this with Hugging Face model ID if you have uploaded the checkpoints to the hub. The dataset name now starts with eval, just to keep things clear and separate from training data. And finally, we have added control.number of image writers processes equal one. This helps maintain a consistent and stable FPS during evaluation by offloading image saving to a separate process. You can tune this value depending upon your system. If you want to switch camera interfaces during evaluation, say from RealSense to OpenCV, you can use robot.cameraInterface equals OpenCV. Once the evaluation is complete, you'll have a full dataset of how your model performed, ready to visualize, analyze, and use for fine tuning. And that brings us to the end of this walkthrough. We have gone from setting up the Trosson AI arms and cameras, teleoperation, collecting episodes, and uploading them to the Hugging Face Hub, visualization, replaying them on the real robot, training a policy, and even evaluation on the real-world robots. Everything you saw is a part of the unified LayerBot pipeline built to help you move faster in experimenting with the Trosson AI systems. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any questions or want to dive deeper into any specific part of this pipeline, feel free to reach out or check out our documentation. We'll see you in the next one. Trosson Robotics, helping innovators innovate.